Uh, let us stand together for our opening hymn, hymn number 378, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Good morning, good to be with you this morning. I'm sure you felt like me if it rained anymore this week, you were going to build yourself an ark and collect two of every animal um, and see how you would do. But thankfully it has stopped uh, from there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord May his grace and peace be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray the collect together. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Just going to pray for our children as they go to Sunday school. God of grace, we thank you for the children of our parish. We pray that as they gather for Sunday school this morning, they may have a sense of your presence with them, the Good Shepherd, who guards them and keeps them in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's be seated. My first reading is a reading from the book of Acts. The next day... Their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Aeneas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander. 
and all who were the high priestly family. When they had them made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name do you do this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of the good deeds we have done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. getting confusing, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Thanks, God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. A reading from 1st John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and we will reassure our hearts before him. When, whenever our, our, our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask before we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Just as he has commanded, all who obey his commandments abide in him, and he has abide and he has abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the gospel reading. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. 
I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The runt of the litter, or the black sheep, have a certain appeal. Those are outsiders who may have not chosen to be different, but end up being set apart for so many different reasons. They also tend to get into trouble more often than others. It's tempting to blame them without a fair trial, as they are the usual suspects. But as much as we would be inclined to condemn them and to give them a good teaching lesson, we also have a soft spot for them. Like a teacher or professor in a teaching class, a teacher might have a soft spot for those in difficulty or for those who are troublemakers. At the same time, the teacher is responsible for taking care of everyone in his class. The teacher knows his students, and the students know him. If the main teacher is temporarily replaced by a substitute teacher, the students will make the difference. They will surely understand the situation and they will behave properly with the substitute teacher. But they will be able to make a difference since they have established a special connection with their main teacher. A teacher has a special vocation since they dedicate their lives to teaching young minds in order to provide them with the proper tools to be successful in life. To save or to change lives, he may not need to literally give his life like a firefighter or police officer, but he can have a significant impact on the lives of the young minds he is shaping through teachings. Speaking of firefighters or police officers, or even doctors or nurses, they too have to care for all. They have to protect and save and serve everyone no matter who they are dealing with, whether they know them well or not at all. Jesus described himself as the good shepherd. His devotion to his flock is complete, and he is prepared to sacrifice his life for it. He has no preferences, but he will make sure to care for all, for everyone. Jesus' authority comes from his Father. This is a great responsibility that Jesus is willing to take on. The level of commitment Jesus is prepared to have towards his flock is displayed. Jesus does not hesitate to extend his care to those who are not part of his flock. This inclusivity and this willingness to take care of everyone is something that someone could normally expect from God especially when we know that God loves everyone and is the father of all all of us. We are his daughters and sons, and we can rest reassured that he will take care of us. It might seem pretty obvious that we should emulate Jesus and that we should care for each other. As mentioned before, there are professionals and trades in a society who take care of others and save others as something that is a given. This is part of who they are. And we can count on Jesus to ensure that his leadership as a pastor is still present 
in our society and in our lives. Our church leadership is trusted by most of us, by all of us, hopefully, to do the right thing for the well-being of their spiritual flock. And we are confident that Jesus will guide his spiritual leaders to properly care for his church. We can also pray for our economic and political leaders to make the right decision for the common good. We can think of all those who are in charge and must have some influential leadership positions. Regardless of their beliefs, Jesus has faith in them and will influence them to do the right thing. Even if we don't agree on the same Christian values, their decisions may not be as different from those of a Christian leader in their position. If we break down to our level, we will all have to demonstrate leaderships and take important decisions at some point in our lives. It may not have the same impact as a CEO of a large company or a political leader who is in charge of a country, but even a minor responsibility can still have an impact on people's lives. If a parent does not perform their chores, such as grocery shopping, can impact their family. If a student does not attend school, it may impact their future. If a worker doesn't show up at work unless it's for good reasons, it may affect his co-workers and the workplace. We all have the chance to show leadership in our lives. And if we follow Jesus' leadership, we will be compassionate good leaders, and care for the well-being of all the people around us. But sometimes, like the higher hands that Jesus was talking about, it's not all people that will care for each other. Some pe people will pretend to care for each other, but they will try to hurt or steal people, for example, through web scams and fraud. It is also our responsibility to protect each other and build a safer and better world. Jesus' leadership was also about caring for all and reaching out to people who are different and on the fringes of our, of our society. In that regard, we as a Christian community are doing very well. Our activities on charities are diverse and we aim to reach out to everyone. Our support extends to other initiatives that are dedicated to making our world better. We are invited to keep having an open mind and to be ready to welcome those who might not think like us. This way we will be faithful to Jesus' spirit and care for all, no matter their background or where they come from. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is leading us to a more loving and compassionate world. Let's not hesitate to follow his footsteps by caring for each other. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us sit or kneel as Norm leads us in prayer. As we pray this morning, let us remember that today is Good Shepherd Sunday and has been named as Vocation Sunday. Pages 646 and 655 of our BIS tells us that all baptized people are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord and to share in the renewing of the word that every Christian is called to follow Jesus Christ serving God and Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'd ask you to listen to this vocation's prayer. God, our hope, your risen Christ commissioned leaders to make disciples of all nations and baptize them to serve as a living testimony to his presence. Raise up in this province vocations to holy orders individuals who will love you with their whole hearts and gladly spend their lives making you known, quicken wisdom in those charged with ministries of discernment or mentorship, and equip theological schools and faith communities in which vocations are encouraged and incubated so that your church, devoting itself to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, and breaking of bread and prayer may live as a faithful sign and instrument of your reign, drawing the world to the one who is the lamb, gate, and shepherd, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And I invite you to remember our own Dr. Amy Polly, who will be ordained in two weeks, and make this prayer your own. We continue in prayer as we pray to Jesus who is present with us to eternity saying, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to all. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning we pray for the Anglican Church of Australia and all those throughout the world living an ordained lay or religious life. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, mercy, hear us. Let us remember the victims of our society, the millions suffering hunger, starvation, and food insecurity, And let us also pray for those who are ministering to them. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. Let us remember this morning those whose names are on our hearts and those prayed for by our prayer team. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, build up the injured, strengthen the sick and lead the healthy and strong to a new pasture. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. And this morning we pray for peace in the many troubled spots of our world, the Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, and the Sudan. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your your mercy, mercy, hear hear us us. and accept our prayers. prayers. And be with us us always. always. Amen. Gracious God, guide us, we pray, in the path of discipleship, so that as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing to others. Bring the promise of the kingdom near by our words and by our deeds. Amen. Amen.
Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes us as sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we are able for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. pray. God of loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Shepherd. Amen.
It's always a good sign when food falls off the wagon. It means there's a lot of food in that wagon. <laughs> Thank you. It's not a good sign when we fall off the wagon. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. To give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of joy, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you've made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory to your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. We were buried in your tomb. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. In the body of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Just to say, if you guess with us, please feel free to take communion um, and participate. Children are also very welcome to take communion. Um, and if you just wish to receive the bread, just simply take the bread. If you wish to receive the red, bread and wine, then when the chalice comes, uh, please take it and tip it towards you, just to help the person along a little bit. If you just want a blessing, just put your arms across you, and we'll bless you. There is also the ministry of lay um, and the lay
We say the prayer after communion together. God of steadfast love, watch over the church redeemed by the blood of your Son. May we who share in these holy mysteries come safely to your eternal kingdom. One flock and one shepherd. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Let's be seated for a raft of announcements. Just a reminder that the, the April um, Pass the Word is out and at the back. Uh, if you haven't read to see one, please do pick one up as well. Um, just going to start. Right, so on the 5th of May, um, Dr. Paul is being ordained um, as, a, as a deacon at the cathedral, at St. James Cathedral. We do have a sign-up sheet, which is in the narthex, for those folk needing a ride. Uh, we're looking at, at renting a bus. Um, but if there are not that many of us going, we might do a car share instead. Um, but do sign up, and the difficulty is that we need to book the buses by Tuesday. So we, we do sort of need to know uh, today um, whether uh, who's coming with us in terms of needing a ride from there. And then um, on the 19th of May, so that's the weekend after Mother's Day, um, we will have a reception here at St. Margaret's. Um, with combined with Trinity and any and the other regional churches, um, to for um, Dr. Pauli to sort of celebrate her ordination, um, and so we will have a, a reception here um, after our service, so around about half past eleven, quarter to twelve ish from there. It's a pretty packed day for us usually, Pentecost Sunday, but um, anyway, from that side we'll be doing that. Laura. Okay. Thanks. Thanks very much, Laura. Appreciate it. That. Great. Okay. Um, and then a couple of key items on there. Um, for those of us who did parts of Living the Questions, the course Living the Questions, um, we are continuing with that course at Trinity at 11 o'clock on a Friday morning until 12.30. And if you want to join us, please feel free to do so. I think we have about four weeks left um, of that course to complete. It's a video series uh, with a... With a discussion afterwards. And then um, some of you participated in the Anglican Liturgy and Worship course that we were offering both at St. Margaret's and at Trinity, and we're going to start that back up again because we didn't get it done. Um, so the first Wednesday in May, uh, we'll start that course back up again here at St. Margaret's at 7.30 um, in the evening. We gather for about an hour and we look at different parts of the service and have a conversation around them. Um, and then on the 4th of May, so the day before Dr. Pauli gets ordained, uh, we have a pastoral training day um, between 9 and 2 o'clock, and it's being hosted here at St. Margaret's. It's for our whole regional ministry, um, but those of you involved in pastoral ministry um, um, are invited to attend that. Do chat to Margaret for more details about that, but we do need to know because we are catering for everybody and offering lunch as well. And then on Tuesday, the 7th of May, we have our Women's Deanery meeting at Trinity between 9.45 in the morning and 2.30 at lunch, before, uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. And there is a lunch on offer. Um, and there is a sign-up sheet as well in the Narthex. Um, and we do need to know so we can cater accordingly um, for you if you are coming to that um, from there as well. And then Lorraine had an announcement about coffee hour. Oh, Beth is going to do it. Do oh, thanks, Beth. <laughs> On Lorraine's behalf. Okay. Lorraine is asking for coffee hosts for late May and into June. There's a sign-up sheet at the back, or you can have a chat with her. And while I'm here, <laughs> there are 209 days until the Christmas market. Wow. <laughs> And nobody's counting. But in the meantime, there are 34 days until the yard sale. 
So keep your treasure in mind when you're amassing that. At this point, I'm looking for someone that would be interested in making a few little A-frames so we can set signs around the corners of the neighborhood. That was something we were lacking last year and that was noted. So if there's somebody that would be interested in doing that, could you have a chat with me, please? And also, I'm going to be hitting you up for help, so be prepared. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. <laughs> Beth always has a command performance. You notice that, I'm sure. <laughs> Very commanding voice. Much appreciated. Um, I think that was it for those things. Just trying to wreck my brain um, from there. All right. Um, one of the things that we are having a conversation about in the parish at the moment is around vocations. So today is Vocation Sunday. Um, and so we're setting up, in the process of setting up a committee um, of, of, of five folk. Um, myself and four other lay people to um, help you discern whether you would like to become a vocational deacon. Um, and a vocational deacon is somebody who is ordained within the local parish and to serve in the local parish. In our case, we serve both the local parish and our regional ministry. Um, and it's, it's a, a recognized ministry. We have a, a process that takes place in the parish first. And then on a diocesan level, we get interviewed by the bishops and so on in order to, to seek out the diaconate. If that's something that resonates with you, then I need you to come and have a conversation with me um, so we can initiate that process. Victor, do you want to like wave madly at everybody? Victor, do you want to wave? Victor, you would like to wave? wave uh, <laughs> Victor is a vocational deacon. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any questions, here's one person who served as a vocational deacon, and uh, we'll happily talk to you as, as well about it. Yeah, I'm sure there, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> um, but but we, we have folk who, who have chosen to serve as deacons, which is really a ministry of service um, within the community and a, a recognized ministry of service. It also is somebody who assists us in the liturgy as well. Um, and so it's, it's quite distinct from a lay reader, a lay reader, uh, is Norm, Norm, you want to wave at us? No. <laughs> and, and Jennifer's a lay reader. Uh, Margaret's a lay reader. Beth's a lay reader. Gospel, all sorts of things. And, they, and they'll have different functions. Judy's another one. Um, so some of our lay readers both read and they preach on a Sunday morning and do prayers and all sorts of other things um, and, uh, and have different roles in our life together. So it's a, again, it's another way of being involved. In, in the leadership of our ministry and liturgical life um, as a community. But if that's something that resonates with you, do come and chat to me. We're always looking for folk to help at this end of the altar, to be honest. We're always looking for folk to, to serve, as, uh, serve at the table. And thank you, Malcolm, for being on this morning. Much appreciated. Um, we need folk who assist us in the chancel guild um, and help set altar, do all those sorts of things that need to happen each and every day. There's a whack of opportunity, and we really want to encourage you to find uh, your place in our life together um, as a community. Okay, so if that's something that you want to explore more, do come and chat to me um, or to Susan uh, when she's back from, from vacation. Okay, from there. Anybody celebrating a birthday today? Well, this week we had Clifford this morning at 8.30. Oh, oh man. Okay. Happy birthday, buddy. We're allowed to ask you, but we won't. Happy birthday. <laughs> Culturally, we can ask younger people how old they are, but we're not allowed to do that at a certain point. I don't know when that other point is, but there is a point uh, when it becomes rude and obscene to do it. But happy birthday, man. Yeah. Anybody celebrating an anniversary this week? As we emerge onto some camp. All right. We're going to sing happy birthday to you, man. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday, buddy. Um, last announcement, on Pentecost Sunday, um, what I'm wanting to do is to do a service that is a multilingual service. Um, often we get the same old faces come forward and do the readings and the prayers, and as much as we appreciate that, um, it's always great to be able to 
get a broader selection of folk coming forward to assist us with the service. But one of the things I'm wanting to do on Pentecost Sunday is have the, the readings and prayers in multiple languages. If you're willing to help out in that, please do come and chat to me. Um, if, you, if you have a particular uh, language that is your home language and you're comfortable having a reading in that language, or you've acquired a language in life, uh, as some of us have done, um, then uh, please do um, come forward to me. One, one of the things I find fascinating about being in Canada is that you claim you're a uh, bilingual society, but you're not, um, which is fascinating in its own special way. <laughs> I come from a, uh, a, a profoundly multilingual society. We speak 12 languages in South Africa, and generally we expect to be able to have some competence in at least three of them. So at school, we taught at least four languages at school, three of them which we continue with. And so it's strange being in a, a multilingual society that isn't multilingual. Um, but we are because of so many folk who come here who share with us. And so I want the Pentecost service to be a reflection of who we are in that break. Um, I know there are numbers of you here who are fairly competent in French, for example. And so we could have some of the readings and prayers and so on in French. But I really want to encourage you to do that. You will also notice that one of the things we're trying to do is encourage some of our younger people to read. Um, so thank you very much indeed this morning, Violet, for reading for us. Um, we're trying to get our younger people involved so we not only... Uh, reflecting that, but also in terms of our age demographic as well, uh, and there's a broader sense of who we are. There are days where you might come in and you might be a little disturbed by the person who's reading who may not be as competent a reader as you hope. And one of the issues that I always deal with is that I want our community to be a reflection of the diversity of who we are in the broadest sense possible. And therefore, participating in the liturgy actually is a really important sign of who we all are together. Um, and sometimes we may, may not be the most skilled person at doing it, and that is okay. We're not aiming, as I had this conversation yesterday with my sons, I am not aiming for perfection. I'm aiming for participation. And those are different value sets. It doesn't mean we don't give our best. We always give our best. But sometimes our best may not be somebody else's best, and that is okay. Okay? And so what I'm saying is that when we come into this space, please know that you have a vocation and it needs to be expressed here. And if you're, in, you're struggling with the competence and the sense of perfection that's required of you, I want you to put that in your back pocket and leave it there and come into the space as somebody who feels affirmed and valued for who you are and what you bring to us. Because that's more important to me than somebody performing. Okay. And... Uh, so however we come into the space, it always needs to be a space of grace and understanding, a space of affirmation and valuing. And if we're struggling, it's okay. It's okay. It should be like a good family where we can accommodate each other and simply go, isn't this great to be together on a Sunday morning to have life and share it together as community? Amen. We're going to sing our closing announcement. Our closing announcement. Oh, there I am. <laughs> I should sometimes let my outside voice be my outside voice and my inside voice stay where it is. But yeah, Maggie. Oh, yes, I'm going to need to bless this. Thank you. Um, Maggie knit a, a, a stole for, for Dr. Pauli. If Dr. Pauli's watching the service, she now knows what she's getting. Um, so thank you, Maggie. <laughs> but anyway, and I'm just going to bless it. God of grace, we give you thanks for these signs of faith, these signs of our position in the life of the church and the ministry you call us to. We pray for your blessing upon this stop. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Closing in. Hallelujah. Sing to Jesus. Let's do that. Let's stand and sing. Oh,
the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, hath redeemed us by his blood. Hallelujah, not as often are we left in sorrow now. Hallelujah, he gives near us faithfully, no questions how. Oh, the cloud from sight received him. The days will roll, shall all hearts forget his promise, I am with you evermore. Alleluia, bread of heaven, thou on earth, our food, our stay, alleluia, here. The sinful lead to thee from day to day. Intercess a friend of sinners, a redeemer, plead for me. Where the songs of all the sinners sweep across the crystal sea. Alleluia, King eternal. Sing to Jesus, he is the scepter, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory of all. Mark the songs of peace, O Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Out of every nation, him does by his blood. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I got more out of your sermon the second time around. I'll be honest. I <laughs> do